It's a little later than it has been in previous years, but better late than ever. Hello, everyone. I'm Lee Diffie. Welcome to Sydney Star City Casino and Showroom for the first event of V8 Superstars in 2005. Are you happy to be here? Yeah. Yes, we are. It's a great crowd, and as always, we've got a great gathering of V8 superstars. Let's not waste any time and get straight to them. We'll introduce you to them in pairs. Big round of applause for Mark Scaife, Brad Jones. They're back. Yeah. Welcome, fellas. Welcome. We keep going with the regulars as well. Welcome, Russell Engel, Greg Murphy. And we have four special guests for tonight. First up, Paul Dumbrell, Stevie Johnson. And our last two special guests for this evening, the first V8 superstars of 05, Craig Baird, Garth Tander. Let's hear it for the boys. <laughs> Nothing better than something new for the new racing season. And I cast your eyes over this way because we've got a new instalment. Greg Rust, Tim Smith sitting on the VB bar. Welcome, guys. Hey, guys. Hi, everyone. Huey and Dewey. <laughs> the odd couple. <laughs> and as a special addition for this new season, we have got the VB hot seat at the bar. Not telling you who is in that hot seat for tonight, but it's a good surprise. We'll welcome him a little later on. But let's get straight to it, folks. Uh, topic du jour is the most recent round, Eastern Creek. It was lively. It was the fourth round of the year. It's been a good start to the year. Your thoughts? You were tangled in a bit of stuff. <laughs> you can you can address was, that, or you can address that, or you can talk about the round. Stuff. Yeah, last weekend I was tangled in a bit of stuff. That's a good way of doing it. Uh, look, it was uh, it was probably a little disappointing because uh, you know, our car was probably, uh, in terms of speed, good enough to be up there somewhere. And uh, as you can see there right now, we had a little uh, a a pass, moment with baby. my mate. It's Thanks. Good pass. Uh, well, it hasn't finished. Oh. Oh, yes, it has. <laughs> it has finished. Now it finished for you, Chief. <laughs> yeah. let's, yeah. get, let's get some opinion on this, folks. Was that the most interesting part of the weekend? Ooh. No. <laughs> Bradley? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Lee. Don't give me hot potato. Um, yeah, it was certainly interesting for what's going on within the championship, but it um, didn't hold much interest for me. Bloke, <laughs> bloke involved was your teammate. What was, what was said within Stone Brothers Racing? Oh. Didn't know much of this for you either, <laughs> did it? Hey, great right. answer. You and started yeah. off just like me. <laughs> I, was nice ho one. I was hoping to get done. I thought, great, another 25 points coming my way. But <laughs> <laughs> but I, didn't you say off stage it's a team thing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, that, it's a team. I only thought that for a millisecond. I'm <laughs> right. the team. Yeah. The team. The so team. then I thought, no, nah, Marcus, I've got to protect him. No, nah, yeah. it wasn't his fault. <laughs> Scaphy. Uh, it's good it. to see the dribble Scaphy has started was, very look, soon in the year. From what, I mean, it's quite obvious that Scaphy was trying to push him off into right, the dirt. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stephen, we're gonna, we, we will revisit this topic a lot, of course. Stephen, you didn't qualify all that well, but by the end of the weekend, you're up into the top ten. Please, result? Uh, yeah, mate, it was as probably uh, as good as we could do on the, on the weekend. The car wasn't as good as what, is, what it was in Perth, but, um, you know, it, it's very hard when you're starting back in 23rd, as I've done many times. And uh, it's, it's probably one of the few times I've got through without a, uh, a very damaged car, which is great. You're catching Brad Jones as yeah. he starts. That's nice, that is. No, no, he finished on his wheels. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah how about a round of applause for Brad? Hey, very good. That's a huge achievement. A huge achievement. Yeah. Well, you know, Whose idea was it to put the stickers upside down or it was just a logical thing to do? <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think plenty of blokes at work had a bit of input. My brother had a fair say in that, I think, and uh, I think every mechanic... He's got a sense of humour. He has got a sense of humour. He's got to dig pretty deep to find it, but he does have one. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Brad at Eastern Creek. Up the Creek, right way. Round four, and there's the upside down oh, yeah. decals. <laughs> I might add, what, what, what you don't see there, I mean, it's fantastic. We've got heaps of press out of it, but the inside of the car was littered with this side up stickers. From the <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think everyone who worked in the Fabby shop and on the car put a this way up sticker inside. It. So <laughs> there was no shortage of gags going around, let and me tell you. Another guy who had a good weekend at Eastern Creek was you, Garth Tander. I mean, after a frustrating start to the season, you had some good top ten results. Yeah, we were very happy qualifying inside the top five uh, and uh, two top ten results. So, uh, and like Steve, came away with a relatively straight car, which we haven't managed to do so far this year. So, um, we got to improve the car a little bit as a race car, but as far as qualifying goes, it's, it's really looking good. So, uh, looking forward to the rest of the year and pressing on. Question to the audience. What did you think about Craig Lowndes winning? Our fourth different winner in four rounds. <laughs> 
Beardo, is that good for the championship? It's got to be, doesn't it? It's got to be, absolutely. Um, you know, the more people we can have up there, the better. It's, um, you know, you don't want a one horse or a two horse race. You, there's a lot of cars out there and we want them all up there. Yeah, there are a lot of Craig Lowndes fans. They were pleased to see him win. Paul Dumbrell, you were in the mix, but you got tangled up with Paul Wheel earlier in, uh, in race one, but uh, you were having a good go early on. Yeah, no, definitely. We were quite happy with qualifying and unfortunately, uh, Wheelie had me around. Uh, you know, I guess he got a drive through, which is a sweet reward for me, but, uh, you know, sort of the car died in the second race, which was a little bit disappointing, but, um, you know, we'll fight on. By the way, have you two spoken since New Zealand? Yeah, mate, just. Yeah, <laughs> the, 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 the green room was quite interesting over dinner. <laughs> Did you know that each other were going to be on the show? Yeah, we did, mate. We're okay. staying at the same hotel, so it's not all bad. <laughs> <laughs> he's, a, there's a lot of, he's put a lot of stuff on his butt. Tomorrow morning's going to be pretty interesting. It, was, it wasn't only him. Anyone else want to put anything got... on his room? No problem. <laughs> but the young bloke's already paid the bill. Yeah. He's already paid the bill. You know the Russell Engel wing at Cam's? <laughs> he's already donated. <laughs> <laughs> he's already donated. It's getting big, that wing. I <laughs> Those blokes are going to have a good Christmas trip. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's, let's revisit your point because it was probably the biggest talking point of the weekend. You and Ambrose coming together again. What's, what's the waters like between you guys? You're talking, no talking? What, what's going on? Well, the little apology before the race didn't sort of work that well, did it? The, uh, we had a little chat before, uh, before the race. Just didn't make up. At Eastern Creek. Well, we did a little make up and, and we have probably got to make up again. You were surprisingly cheery, actually. Yeah. I'm surprised. We were actually all having a bit when we walked out of the hotel before. It's like, how, how's he going to be? <laughs> You're all good. A couple of ales in the green yeah, room. He's right, yeah. A couple of glasses of personality. The big, I think the big point to get across is that we did ask Marcus if he was interested to be on uh, V8 Superstars for this first episode. He was unavailable. So it's hard, it's hard, to, it's hard, to, it's hard to attack someone if they're not here to defend themselves. No, but sure. no, let's but, do it but, anyway. But do you, have any, <laughs> do, you have, do you have anything to say to him? No, I've got nothing to say to him. I'll say, I'll say whatever it is privately, uh, you know, if we, if we have a chat. But, uh, Just use you know, me. Use me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Arbitrator. Yeah, channel the energy through, man. Yeah. 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 And you can see how that'll change when it gets to Marcus. Yeah. Yeah. You wouldn't change what he said, would you? Never. Actually, no. actually, one, one of the things that's pretty interesting, though, you've been, you've been unbelievably quiet this year. Mark, and I, I'm, I'm actually thinking that we need to take got. your label, because it's obviously not being used, and give it to Marcus. Marcus the Enforcer. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. You've mate. lost it. No. He, he, he can absolutely have it. Oh, you don't want it, yeah. Well, the crap that I've had over the last few years, he can, he can, he can, he can do actually, with it. He, he's building a new house, Murph. He's building a new house. He can't afford to. Uh, That's right. Yeah. 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 Brand here and there. He's pathetic. <laughs> Marcus should look... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's very harsh, man. I just want you to fire up. <laughs> I'll fire up, buddy. Don't you worry. <laughs> I was pretty happy because on the first race, first race last weekend, you were very kind. You didn't hit me. It was, it was nice. Oh, I was trying to hit you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I had a couple of real good stabs, but missed. <laughs> All right, we will continue this on the other side of the break. V8 Superstars is up and running for 2005. We'll be back on the other side of this. See you shortly. Welcome back. You're watching V8 Superstars here on your home of Motorsport Network 10. The first one for the year, and we're in Sydney at the Star City Casino and Showroom. Let's talk about the season in uh, a little more detail because it's been a dynamic start to this new season. Four rounds so far, four different winners. It's a brilliant start. It's a very healthy championship. But, Russell, I do have to say you started the season with a very interesting, <coughs> in a very interesting way. When we all arrived in Adelaide... Oh I think God. you know what oh, I'm yeah. getting to. Oh, yeah. When, when we all arrived I, in Adelaide, you agreed we, we, we woke up at our hotel rooms, and for those of you who weren't in Adelaide, open up, there's the Adelaide advertiser on the oh, floor, you pick no. it up. What's on the front cover? It's, it's Russell Ingle in a wedding dress. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got to say, that stunt, the only thing I've seen that's worse than that is him in a pair of boxing shorts and gloves on the cover of Auto Action. Does anyone remember that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Scape, he's got it! <laughs> Hey, Murph, I reckon that's starting to explain the soft thing this year. <laughs> oh. I reckon hey. it's all coming together. <laughs> I'm, get, I'm getting in touch with my feminine side, right? <laughs> And there's nothing wrong with that. No. You've, you've got a very quick right of reply. What was it all about? Publicity uh, stunt? Well, the way, okay, I, the way I figured, I think it, at that stage, um, Scaife had been quickest in the first practice session, I think, so there was a good chance he was going to be on the front cover. 
So I had to ace him. Whatever it takes, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it Don't takes. Do that. Like it wasn't planned. You just woke up in the morning and went, I know, geez, we've got to get the front cover. I'm <laughs> 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 I know. Crush a winning dress. Plane I've got three a, I've, weeks in it. And you know that's I've got a pretty inventive PR, PR guy. The fruit before, huh? I've got a pretty inventive PR guy. Yeah, have you ever? Let's, let's stay on the topic of Adelaide because it was a pretty hot topic. Turn eight, we're mentioning, and uh, there was a lot of crashes there. Unfortunately, Garth, you were one of the guys to, uh, to hit that wall. Good corner, bad corner. Is it an exciting one as a driver? What? Oh, well, I've actually two years in a row gone into that wall there now. So um, I, I don't have a problem with the corner, though. It's, a, it's an exciting corner. It's like the Phillip Island turn one with no room for error. So um, this year, um, it was someone else's uh, efforts that put me into the wall. Last year, it was my mistake. So um, no, the outside wall's there. Everyone knows it's there. <laughs> what, were you, what were you saying there, mate? I was pretty happy with the whole thing. <laughs> Making sure the that. door was closed. <laughs> so um, yeah, I thought the door might not shut because it might be a bit bent. But, um, you know, it's, it's just one of those things. It's a great corner, and, and in qualifying, we all love it. It's, you know, heart in your mouth stuff. Well, and, it, was, uh, it wasn't just you, was it? Because Ellery, Ellery hit it, uh, Bargwana hit it. Um, what, what do you think, Paul? Do you, all right. Yeah, Paul. Yeah, 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 he's, yeah, Paul yeah, yeah. he's actually a good, like, good bloke to ask about. That. <laughs> I reckon it's a great corner. You know, you just, uh, no, it's, you know, it's a fast corner, as uh, as Garth was just saying. You know, there's a lot of tracks around Australia which have these fast corners. Um, it's just that uh, Adelaide's got a wall on the outside, so everyone takes that into consideration. And it's just unlucky for a couple of people who are obviously getting the wrong side of it. Ambrose dominated Adelaide, of course. We skipped across the Tasman. We went to New Zealand. A lot of people always, maybe they sometimes bicker about the facilities or the resources at, at, at Pukekohe, but it always provides good racing, doesn't it? Sorry, I'm not looking well, at you two. <laughs> 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 oh, and Murph, Murph was the hero again. Uh, I, don't, I don't think there's anybody that doesn't, I don't know, that, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the racetrack's great. Everyone enjoys it. Is that right? Fantastic. It was, it was Fred, what did you think of the, of the Armco barriers? I think that you could probably move the, um, the Armco fence a little further away from the edge of the track, but yeah. other than that... Hey, who, who had you oh, off? Yeah, who hit yeah, you, who by the way? You, there, you, what happened there? <laughs> It Fred, was, uh, it was someone, you ca who'd you come together with? Fred, Racer X, unidentified. Racer X? <laughs> unidentified uh, competitor. Brad, what happened at home, you know, when, when you had the next family barbecue with your nephew there? Was it like, it was a great chat that you guys were just, did you just discuss well, it? Like, how did it happen? Can you roll the family thing out? <laughs> yeah, literally. I'm not sure if you still mix and mingle much with your family, but what we did was... Uh, what came, we did? He came down and talked to me about after the, uh, after the race and right. we sorted out in about three minutes. It was actually interesting watching your brother because usually... <laughs> <laughs> oh, this space for rent! Usually, on a more serious note, if someone has got some money and would <laughs> like that spot, there's no doubt but it's usually, a sale. Usually your brother, yeah. you know, who, if someone had been involved there and put you upside down, like, he would have gone off, wouldn't he? he How did. did he react? That is, uh, uh, maybe I think it was a lot of turmoil. That right, was, that he was, was the, caught up the in the new whole thing. Two, two, torn. Two, yeah. two other things that we have to address about, about the Pukekohe race was, that, first of all, finishing in the dark, and we finished in the dark as a result of the, the big accident with you guys. Beto, what do you yeah. <laughs> want to say about yeah, it? Yeah, we'd like another hot potato, but um, <laughs> I guess at the end of the day, I, I head down there and... Um, what was this like now? It, Boof. I it thought you were going to end up on the horse track. Going better. forwards, but I tell you what, at 2:40 going backwards, that changed my opinion. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> and the worst part about the whole deal was, uh, I think Craig Gore had actually rented a chopper there for that weekend, and he parked it in just behind that arm car. And I was more worried about getting an invoice for the chopper <laughs> than I was about the accident. So. Uh, but look, at the end of the day, we both walked away unhurt, and I guess that's the main thing. Do you think it was Paul's fault? Absolutely, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think I put so much stuff on his bar tab last night? Do you honestly think it was his fault? What, do you? I don't think so. Whose fault do you think it is, Russell? Oh, I, th I think it was a 50-50 job. Well, ask, well, uh, ask, well, let's get Paul's thoughts. Yeah, no, definitely. I reckon Russell, uh, I'll take everything I put on the bar tab off last night. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's, um, Not only that, your car's going to be washed in the next <laughs> yeah. couple of days. No, you know, I was really disappointed, uh, I guess, you know, with the stewards' decision in the end. Um, you know, sort of a beardy got off the, uh, off the throttle and on the brakes coming onto the straight, so naturally I went down the inside and I sort of... Uh, Came to, coming down to turn one and there was sort of moved over so you know from my position you know I thought I was uh, doing the right thing but uh, obviously the steward's decision was final and we've got to move on from there. 
Well, the good thing, like Craig Baird said, is that you both walked away. Obviously, the stewards have dealt with it the way they have, and you both got different opinions. But on a positive... Funny, that, really. Mm. <laughs> On a positive, you cleaned up and it was a success. Your success steamroller continued at Pukekohe. Talk, all of you, tell, tell us what it was like about actually racing in the dark. For us sitting in the commentary booth looking out, we couldn't believe it. It was like looking out here, basically. It wasn't, the, it wasn't the dark so much, it was the wet track as well. I, you couldn't see anything. I didn't mean yelling and screaming, don't listen to that. Let's hear it for Murph, hey? Good day. <laughs> what were you going to say, Scafie? I thought you were going to say that when they were all running around in the dark, they all looked like WPS cars. They're all, they're all black. <laughs> and when you, uh, how were you going with calling them then? Were you saying it was that difficult? Was, it was difficult. You had it right. Yeah, you yeah. Had it yeah, yeah. Murph won. Yeah, Murph yeah. won. Yeah, Murph won. Yeah. Good job. Well, that's the main thing, really. <laughs> <laughs> right, we move on to Barber Gallo in Perth. That was a, a successful race meeting. You got up. You had a win there. We had three different winners across the three races. That was a very good round. Um, must no, have been, about race two. Well, I mean, it must have been nice to get a win, though, to, 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 yeah, no, to get away. It was. I mean, it's a good, uh, it was a good start to the year with the Grand Prix and then to roll into, you know, the, the first part of the year with good car speed has been encouraging for us. But uh, we haven't really got the right result for us yet, so we'll, uh, we'll press on and see what happens. One of the big talking points to come out of the Barbagallo round, as I look towards Garth Tander, right. was uh, sand on the track. And after <laughs> going off the track, which wasn't your fault, you were helped off the track. Right. Um, but there was yourself, there was Stephen Ellery, and, and of course Craig Lowndes that came back onto the circuit. How, what, what's your opinion? What uh, I mean, obviously you want to get out, out there and just get back into the race. But what happened? Um, what, what happened when I got put into the sandpit, or what happened after I came out of the sandpit? After. Um, <laughs> well, we were actually because you're in the middle of a race, you get you fired off into the sandpit, and you don't get a chance to clean the radiator, so the car's sitting there boiling so you its drive brain on, off. So you drive onto the racing line and, and tip sand everywhere. Is <laughs> 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 this Monty Python tonight or something? It wasn't planned, so... Um, would you do the same thing to Lounsey? I mean, I mean mine didn't have any um, adverse results on anyone. Lounsey came back on the track and helped one of his, t well, helped his Ford teammate off the circuit. Oh, yeah, yeah so. but, but it had to be Lounsey's fault. That was yeah. dead set Lounsey's fault. Was it? Oh, for sure, because okay. they wouldn't have told us on the radio that there was dirt at that corner. Yeah, but he was the first one in. What? No, no, no. Did they, did they get, tell us on the radio? Yeah, they did, but yeah. he was the first one up there, and, you know, you and, and he swept most of the sand off. But I'm I, sure when Craig was going off, he would have he said to himself when he was going off, I reckon this could affect Marcus's race. No, <laughs> but what he should have done. <laughs> <laughs> He's a pretty deep thinker, you're right. Here's your big moment, Scafie, coming up done shortly. Is, now, all they all should have done was get right. offline, and jump on the brakes and dump the sand offline. Dumping the sand online isn't the right thing to do. Yeah, and then, um, we're all guilty of it, aren't we? Huh? That's all, right. Oh, that's, just what about guys? Okay. But it's, it's only an issue with that did, circuit. Hang on. There's your big moment, Sophie. But where, do you, where do you draw the line? I mean, you get guys driving around with oil puking out of their car for lap, up, lap, on, lap after lap. They don't get black flag. Nothing's set up. Is, so is, what's the big difference? There's plenty of issues that aren't sorted out, but I think that's one that can well, be sorted unique, out. Sand is unique to Barbagello, and we probably don't have that issue as much about the surface. Well, we definitely don't. But, so. but it maybe, I mean, at that event, I think what should be issued in the sub regs is if you go off... You, when you come on, try and get rid of all the stuff out of your car did, offline. Did, but where's Garth going to go, realistically? Over when he to comes the other side of the on. track. When he jumped on the brakes. But he's come from the outside. He's got to cross the track to get off the line anyway. But they're so. under the pace car. So where's he going to go? So he's got to get over the, the line. The That's right. So he's got to cross the track, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah but, but he doesn't jumped, have to stand he, on the pace. He doesn't have to stand on the brakes when he's online. But Steve, he Steve, when he's so should I radio you, Brad, and ask when I can get rid of the sand out of the top of my car? Garth, if, if that's going to, it is quite. You know what? <laughs> if um, if that's going to help you make the right decision, <laughs> maybe you should. As, as long as you can see where I am from sitting upside down in the car, that'll be yeah. fine. I could have seen where you were when I was upside down. Oh, here we go! Here we go! I, it happened that, just in front of me. Now that interesting bit there, because that was actually under safety car there. Yeah. That yeah. car in there. Yeah, it was. Hey, so, we got some, we got something for you too, Brett. It's oh. a it's a bread roll. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, you spilled his water! Oh. oh, that's not fair, boy. You spilled his water. It's, that's a brand. There are a lot of props. There are a lot of props I keep on checking under my desk for somebody to throw it. Stephen, hang on, get back to the no, roll. Let's get back to the roll. Get well, back to the roll. Was it under yellow, by the way? Yes, it was. So, what happened? Nice um, got a bit man. sideways and ran out of ability. No, it. Um, <laughs> I came down into the came down in the hairpin behind Bessie. I hit the oil that had been left on the track from um, 
um, Ritter's car back stepped down and just slid off the track. Right. Well, let's go to a positive. That was Steven. good. That really worked, didn't it? <laughs> that easy? that was easy it. to do, that blue, green, blue, green. <laughs> yeah. More importantly, how come we haven't looked at the Grand Prix? That was a great event for me. I mean, all we're looking at. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're just dealing with championship events. Just championship no, I'm events. I'm not interested in that. I'm looking at anything that makes me look good. Stephen <laughs> Johnson, for you, it was a great return to form where you had two top fives in Perth. Let's hear it for hey, Stephen. Hey, Diff, Diff, hey? I'm still on the telly. Let's yeah, talk I know, about it. I'm trying to help Stephen out What are you doing? Here. You're moving on. Let's get back to the real stuff. <laughs> <laughs> now, that was, that was a little bit nervous for you. Uh, Page wracking. one of the, um, the good MC is always talk about what's on screen at the time. Oh, yeah, but <laughs> Billy would have talked when, about what was actually, on the Billy screen. Would have done that. Let's talk about when you were upside down. It was a bit nerve wracking, wasn't it? No, uh, in, in all seriousness, now you've got to that, it was. It was uh, very scary. You're in those cars Nothing with the windows all up. Yeah, yeah, enough of Brad's <laughs> <laughs> And Paul Radisic, there he is, give me a bit of a slap on the back. He was very helpful in getting me out of the he car. Actually, he actually uh, burned his yeah. hand. What's Paul's yeah. hand yeah. Yeah. The new beanie. <laughs> Radisic Beanie. Ever seen that movie, They're a Weird Mob? You know, where the place with the hanky? That's yeah, just... he's gonna, he was off to do a bang <laughs> up. <laughs> he finished getting out of the car. Scraping, have no fear. If you're ever upside down, mate, I'll be straight over yeah. the door. Yeah. 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 I'll be over going, how can I lock the door? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with a cigarette lighter. <laughs> <laughs> God damn matches. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you would have bought the cheap ones. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, that brings us to an interesting topic. He's when got when you do. <laughs> when you do see one of your fellow drivers in trouble, I mean, I can remember a few years ago when Lounsey had the big one at, at, uh, at Calder and a few of you guys got out and ran to help him and I think a few of you got in trouble, didn't you, from the stewards? No. So, I mean, we, got, we, got blamed, we got blamed of trying to... Uh, um, what were we doing? Uh, Did you run to help him, Russell? Well, who's that? Lounsey. Lounsey. He was upside down. Oh, I'll tell you a funny story about that. <laughs> <laughs> actually, actually, it was your boss, and it, it was very funny. Well, he was my boss at the time, too. Oh, Larry, when he went upside down. When he was walking to the bottom of the car. Yeah, everyone was running over, helping him out. And, he, and Larry, to his credit, he went over to help him out, but saw there was enough people helping him out. He was out. checking out the bottom so of the car. So he was checking out the bottom of the car. <laughs> 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 right, it was the funniest thing. I was in classic. Anyone got a camera? Anyone yeah. got a camera? That's right. Yeah. Oh, Lousy's car's yeah. a left-hand drive. Why are you on that side, Larry? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, moving on. Yeah, anyway. No. But you are getting back to that topic. You're not going to stand around and see one of, your, one of your mates, one of your peers, you know, just stay there and while you wait for the uh, No one uh, stopped help me out of the car. Well, yeah, Radisic did. He was already stopped. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, and we all fun. saw that. Oh, that's yeah, that's right. okay. And it's not like it just happened once, Lee. It happened twice. I know. All right. We need to squeeze in a quick break here. When we come back, we're going to go to the VB bar, the hot seat. We will grill Larry Perkins when we return. Two young guys were showing a wonderful time out at Eastern Creek recently and they were taken there uh, courtesy of the Starlight Foundation and Starlight is the official charity of V8 Superstars this year. We are very delighted to have them on board. How about a big round of applause for the Starlight Group, Starlight Children's Foundation. And we're going to help raise lots of money for them throughout the year. It's a very good cause. But for now, let's go to the hot seat. Here's Greg and Tim with Larry Perkins. Thanks very much, Tim. Come on, Sydney, nice round of applause for LP. We're here with a living legend, we are. Greg. How are, are you, old son? All right? Well, I'm definitely living, that's for sure. But I'm not sure about the legend status, but I'll accept that no, it's been handed out. And what were the, the boys were talking before the break there about that rollover in, involving Craig Lowndes. What were you doing that day? Well, actually, Russell had it pretty right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he was five. I've got to say, I was first driver there, and uh, the officials got there quickly, and then I thought, well, let's have a look at the HRT mobile, and... Um, so I said, yeah. Did you learn anything? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know I'd got Jeff Gretsch upset. <laughs> <laughs> now, what's going on with your long-time sponsor, Castrol? They're doing different things next year. Where are you at with trying to find a replacement for 06? Well, uh, yeah, they're, they're after 13 years, um, uh, they've gone on elsewhere with um, you know, their own uh, direction in uh, marketing, and um, that certainly has left a hole for me next year, which I have to fill. But, uh, yeah, we've got... Um, you know, feelers out everywhere, as, as everyone has all the time. And Is it hard trying to find a replacement? Well, I've never had to do it before. I've, <laughs> I've had a sponsors for a long time. Castro was to say, 13 years old and current sponsor of 20 years. Long time, isn't it? I know. Like, I've, n I've not really been out in this hustling game uh, much at all. But, uh, yeah, we've got a pretty good package to offer. And, uh, yeah, I'm pretty pleased that uh, Richo's driving so well. He's leading Holden uh, uh, driver at the moment. So, 
Yeah, we've got a lot to offer, and we'll just see how the year pans out. He doesn't reckon he's a hustler. Do you reckon he's a hustler? Well, mate, I'd buy anything off flags. <laughs> 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 Plenty of people consider themselves experts in the paddock. A lot of them on the, on the panel here this evening. And the talk around the paddock at the moment is, you're over it. You sold your fran franchises, your licences not too long ago. Will you stay in this game as a team owner beyond, say, 2006, if you can't find a replacement sponsor? Well, um, what's the safe answer here? Um, I'll, I'll consider my options. You know, there's certain aspects of it that uh, after 35 years, that, you know, you get you down a bit or you may want to move on. And, but, you know, I've, I've been a racer since I was half a year old and uh, I like it. I've got 50-odd guys work for me full-time. They've all got, uh, you know, houses, mortgages, families, wives, all that sort of stuff. Mm. I feel a lot for them and it's a great uh, team of guys and uh, I'm not just going to walk up one day and switch, I'll switch off and walk out. Uh, so we'll just consider our options as we go along. For whatever reason, your name often is in the middle of a brawl with either officials or administrators. Do you get sick of fighting City Hall? Yeah, I do, to be honest. And I suppose uh, what disappoints me most is that uh, not enough of the other team owners, you know, the, the guys that, like me, that own the team, started 15, 20 years ago, started this whole thing off, not enough of them are willing to get up and uh, have the fight. And that, that disappoints me. And uh, I think you've got to have a balance on things. You know, we can't always have uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the one side having it right all the time and, and the others you know, have to shut up. And uh, I think you've got to have a little bit of dissent in the camp to keep a balance. If you close up shop, Laz, do you reckon you'd like maybe run for head of Avesco? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, to be very honest, the uh, head of Avesco is in Tony Cock, and yeah. I, I think they do a great job. Uh, yeah. That's the marketing side of it. It's no secret that uh, some of the um, um, elements of Avesco uh, in the rulemaking, mm -hmm. especially the technical rulemaking, uh, uh, you know, I don't see eye to eye with, and that's not a secret. And, um, you know, there, there's room for plenty of listening from both parties always. And, uh, you know, don't forget the owners uh, which started this category a long time ago had something pretty good going from when we handed it on to the, uh, the SEL of ESCO marketing side. So, yeah, we got it pretty right early on mm. and they've carried on. So we're not all stupid and we probably need to be listened to a bit more. Mm. Well, Les, I've got to ask you, would you ever build up a Ford? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I can tell you the uh, uh, long answer is uh, definitely no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I tell you, tw 20 years, I said before, mm -hmm. of uh, continuous support from Holden, that, that's, that's a tremendous uh, uh, thing, and I'm pretty, mm. uh, pretty happy about that. Um, and that, you know, the whole network of uh, Holden, from obviously the company right through all the dealers, I, I wouldn't know how to operate without them uh, supporting mm. me. And uh, I think there's a bit of mutual respect there. That raises an interesting question. If you weren't involved in motorsport, what game would you play? Yeah. Oh, God. Um, Come on. You, you like cricket. I know that much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I um, broke my nose at school in cricket. And I broke my collarbone at, uh, in my, when I was trying to be an AFL star when I was about 16. And uh, so they were all too dangerous. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you reckon? I must admit, I, I always did like looking up at the a aircraft <laughs> industry, but I, I don't know what it is. It's a tough question. You end up, I mean, here I am at uh, you know, 38 years old towards the end of my career. Still not sure. <laughs> still not sure what I'm going to do. How old are you? You were standing next to Robert Menzies when the first FJ rolled off. <laughs> <laughs> what was your first car? Yeah. It's going back a bit. Um, <laughs> That's my question. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, I, I, I traded a push bike in on a 1927 Dodge. And that was a damn good deal. I, the guy who got the uh, push bike thought he had a good deal, but I reckon I got the Dodge, I had a better deal. That was way back in 1961. Oh, gee. So there. You would have been like 40, 50 years old. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I wish I still had the Dodge, that's for sure. Not sure I, I bet the guy off the push bike doesn't wish he had it anymore. Now, Les, do you miss Russ? Do you, you know, because like you used to share beds together and stuff. You know, top to tail, <laughs> nothing weird. Who's been telling you that? <laughs> <laughs> Look, uh, Russell drove for me uh, for seven years and, uh, you know, I dragged him out of the slums and... Um, mm. uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you reckon you taught him a thing or two? <laughs> But look, um, uh, Russell did a, uh, yeah, we've obviously had our professional fights and so on, but 
Uh, Russell did the, the, the tried his hardest for seven years with me, and he, he went on to you know do better things and so on. And um, well, he, you know he's, 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 he thinks living in Queensland's better. But anyway, he's looking um, soft this year, isn't he, Les? Well, I think as someone said earlier, the enforcer tag is gone. Yeah. But uh, I don't think it did him any uh, uh, you know, help in the in the stewards' room. <laughs> uh, last one, Larry. Are you as happy as Larry? <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> How about a nice round of applause? Larry Perkins. <laughs> Biff? Well done, boys. Well done. Larry Perkins in the hot seat with Greg and Tim. We need to take a quick break from Sydney's Star City Showroom and Casino. We'll be back. Plenty more V8 superstars coming up. Loads more. Welcome back to V8 Superstars, the first one for 2005. Before we go any further, let's get you superstars to thank a superstar, Larry Perkins and Greg and Tim well over done. at the VV Bar. Well done, well LP. Done, well done. Thanks for coming well done, on the mate. show. What about and what, just a second, Scapey, while Rusty? we're talking about Rusty over there at the VB Bar, a big round of applause for our Greg oh, Russ because no. Greg has just been engaged oh. to his yeah. fiancée, now fiancée Sarah. Well Thank done, you. Rusty. Thank you. Well done, Rusty. <laughs> Thank you. came in good, Russell, didn't it? It I came in handy for something. I want it back, Greg, all right? I want it back. <laughs> all right. Let's, um, let's change up a gear here and, and just put V8s on pause for a moment, fellas. Talk about the world of motorsport. There's a lot's, lots going on. I mean, recently, the Indianapolis 500, uh, Formula One, of course, every couple of weeks. Weber did well recently. Weber's Very good. Been, Weber's been going great. He's yep. been the best qualifier of the year, mm. and uh, he's, he's had a great season so far. I think there's, the, yeah, the car's obviously not good enough, but it's got better. And uh, the, the, the level of interest at the moment with Renault and, and Toyota's, Toyota's uh, speed's been good. Uh, McLaren clearly now have the best car. Um, Ferrari dismal performance and uh, and uh, again with uh, the Williams starting to sneak up it's, it's actually looking like a really good season but you know when Shuey seems to get by himself in the middle of the race he can he just belts those fast laps out doesn't he like he Monaco wasn't, he wasn't so good the other week no, though at Nürburgring he no, was but struggling a, a bit but Monaco yeah. when, when he got mm. uh, when he was out there by himself man he was fast I tell you, it's, it's got some interest back in Formula 1 though yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. I'm actually, I'm actually watching races yeah, it's that's fantastic def it's what it needed it needed a few more winners and a bit of variety and I guess you know even more so with a mark being up the front and uh, dare say that he uh, should take out a race win later in the year if they get the car switched on. Do you guys stay up? I mean, do you religiously yeah, stay up and watch, watch every yeah. Grand Prix or at least tape we, it or yep, whatever? Stay up to watch the yep. fantastic Channel 10 broadcast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ah, good on you, GT. Oh, that'll get him places. Oh, that'll I reckon I'll get him places. back now. Oh, yeah. He'll be back. He'll be back. <laughs> oh. I'll He'll be back again. I yes. still can't make it past lap five. <laughs> really? <laughs> lap, lap five, I'm dribbling on the pillow. I'm stuck to my head. Yeah, but, yeah, but, no, that's yeah, anything. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that, that's what happens when you get a bit old. And, yeah. Yeah. Is that got a, yeah. Julia's rocking you. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I said rocking. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Glad we're clarified. This is a family that. show, Chief. Yeah. Staying yeah. with the Australians overseas, what about Briscoe? Ryan Briscoe recently finished 10th in the Indy 500, his first attempt. Awesome effort. Bad, yep. Well, I Big watched effort. the Indy 500 last night. Actually, it was a uh, fantastic night of uh, entertainment. I watched the Grand Prix. Yep. Had a bit of an hour break, had a bit of a nap, woke up, watched the Indy 500. And um, that's what's called morning. the Channel 10, the home yeah. of motorsport. <laughs> and then the, all this, night long. This morning, the, the Coca Cola 600 was on in Charlotte, and my wife woke up. And said, What's that noise? And I went, It's uh, NASCAR. Who's the girl that got fourth in there? Danica Patrick. That's she was great leading effort. with a great she, she looked like she was Go in girls. for a while. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's not what you sit out the back. <laughs> yeah. You sit out the back, you'd retire if a girl out qualified. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you said. Uh, Imagine the sponsorship opportunities. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine. Yeah, yeah, we've no wonder you're thinking of money yeah, again yeah, straight yeah, up. Yeah. <laughs> but really that's um, a good job. She's yeah, that's fantastic. Fantastic. didn't tear a, tear a corner off it. And um, this is her at the end of the race. She's a bit disappointed and upset. But um, well, she, she was did leading. a really I mean, good job. Well, they, they used a pretty aggressive fuel strategy with her towards the end of the race. And, and I think with probably four or five to go, they told her to, to run it lean because it was going to run out of petrol. And three guys went past her, and uh, I think it was a lap or two laps later, full Thank course you. caution came out, and that was the end of the race. And, um, uh, you know, she, she, I think, was a little disappointed then, but fantastic job. Garth, you um, obviously <laughs> were in, in earlier in your career an open-wheel driver in Formula Ford. Do you ever have any aspirations to go overseas? Uh, no, because as you go further up the uh, Formula ladder, the cars get smaller and smaller, and being you know, six foot three, it gets t tougher and tougher to slide into one of those things. So um, I realised pretty early on that uh, somewhere in tin tops was where I was headed. And, um, and V8 Supercars was it, but uh, I mean, obviously you'd love to jump in one and go for a fang and just squeeze yourself in there somehow and go for a fang because they're obviously awesome things. 
Yeah, Steve, what about you? Ever want to go anywhere? I mean, your dad. <laughs> yeah, 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 your dad went over and raced in America well, for a little bit. If you've gone to the two hey? tallest blokes at the table, <laughs> yeah. I've been lucky to fit in NASCAR. <laughs> <laughs> what imagine imagine trying to squeeze you into a single seater. That'd be funny. I did race a Formula. It was Formula Holden back then, wasn't it? When they raced them over here, I did. Squeeze into one, although my head blocked the air vent into the, uh, <laughs> into the thing. The thing didn't go very fast down the straight, but uh, I had to drive down the straight with my head on the side. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> but went right, though. We uh, we touched on NASCAR briefly. You need to be quiet here, otherwise you'll talk for the rest of the <laughs> night. Okay. Just but, but like NASCAR the yeah. stories what's, at the back. What's the uh, what's the general consensus in this group about about Marcus going to the states? Do you think he'll make it? I think we it's unreal. <laughs> I think he'll go to the States I, and have a crack. You won't find anyone there who is. will uh, disagree with him. Go. I think Scapey's pretty uh, happy. <laughs> 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 and I mean, he's happy you, you were talking to Qantas when we were out the back before booking yeah. a ticket. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Yeah, I've organised a flight for him. Yeah. Um, but Next not, not as happy. I'm not as happy as Russell. Because yeah. Russell thinks it's okay because, you know, when the better guy goes, Russell will be able to <laughs> 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 We'll be able to continue uh, on for a few years. It's probably another three or four years. How old are you now? Hey, Russell, I'm Yeah, wait, hang on. No, how old, are you, how old are you now? Yeah. As much as I recall, the last few races, your teammate's been kicking your backside oh. pretty hard. Oh. <laughs> your, your recollection's good. And to be quite your, honest, your recollection's good. To be quite honest, I reckon he's doing a lot better job than that. Yeah. I reckon Tom's doing a hell of a job. <laughs> yeah, I, got, I actually got to give I actually got to stick out from a little bit, which I don't often do, but um, Why would I you guess, do that? Because because the only reason his teammate's been beating him because he's been in the sand trap thanks to your teammate. <laughs> 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 If he's not talented enough to get out of those oh. situations, <laughs> then, oh. yeah, that's right. Uh, hey, your big, your big push this year is, you know, four times second. You need to be the champion this year. How important is it to be champion over your teammate? Ah, oh, well, obviously you want to you want to win the championship with no, the best okay, drivers in the category. Me a straight. Yeah, but you do. I, I want to win the championship with the best drivers in the category, and I yeah. reckon there's never been a stronger year than this year. So whoever whoever does win this championship this year, at least they know the best has been here. So. This year's going to be the one. After dropping around, actually, you are leading the championship by point from Ambrose Russell. I just thought I'd come to you. Oh, you know, the mathematician at the end. You think Thanks he didn't know Actually, that? I got that from yeah. Brad. <laughs> 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 actually, we'll run with that, so I'm yeah. actually leading the championship. Did you know Wow, that, very good. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. It wasn't very Can, spontaneous, no, was it? Took some, it took some Can you guys read their plow signs up there? It's been an interesting year for you guys. New team, new team. New team, three of you in a row. New team member, uh, new team mate, I should say. How, how's the first four member. rounds been? <laughs> Where's that member team, from? Team <laughs> member. <laughs> so you know. So you got the member last year. Yeah. <laughs> how's, it been? how's it been? How's it been at WPS? I know it's been a little bit tough on the race results side. Yeah, it's been, it's been tough, tough start for me, but um, you know, I certainly gave the guys a bit more work after uh, New Zealand. But look, it's always. No, I pulled it. Pulled it. Pulled it. Pulled it. Pulled it. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Why do you keep going back there? We've got to go back to the same hotel in five minutes, mate. In the same car. <laughs> and we'll send him to his room and we'll go to the bar. And, uh, and, and, and But it keeps everyone motivated, mate. A change is as good as the rest, you know, like it's, it's been good. So no complaints from mine. <laughs> what are you going on about? <laughs> you know what you are crying up here. Yeah. <laughs> a, a, team a, a, year yeah. a, a year and a half ago, yeah. they wanted you, to tear each other's heads off. And now they're laughing. He's crying. <laughs> They're brothers in arms. They're I'll brothers. Be sharing a car back to the motel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just he used to cry, didn't he? He used to cry. I'm just so happy about leading the championship. <laughs> <laughs> someone, someone get Russell a tissue. That's right. If I was you, I'd grab a hanky because it won't be long. <laughs> <laughs> when we come back, we're going to get back on the V8 Supercar Championship Series and hear some questions from you to these guys. Stay with us. First V8 Superstars of the Year. We're here in Sydney at the Star City Casino and Showroom. Time to get back to the V8 Supercar Championship Series and hear some questions from you, you, you guys, the spectators, the viewers, the fans, and these were recorded at Eastern Creek. Mark, hi, I'm Deanna from Canberra. I'd like to know how young, talented drivers would get into the V8 Series without financial backing or funding. Have you got any suggestions that we could use? Thanks. Scafie? Well... No financial backing, what's that do, Russ? You never right. thought of it, have you? 
Um, Go get a real job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> work that means it'll kill you. What? Um, <laughs> I think uh, really the answer to the question is probably no different to how it's always been. Motor racing is uh, is hard to uh, to get to the highest level. There's no doubt. Um, the, the major thing probably is that you believe in your own talent and you try to work your way through the system, which is pr pretty much there in terms of go karting and Formula Ford and all the junior categories coming through. I, I think there's more opportunity today than there was 15 or 20 years ago because the, the our category, for instance, is going much better. There's 30 drives today when there used to be 10 or 12. So, um, I mean, the, well, there used to be yeah, six. six. Yeah, I mean, there was, there was a, a lot smaller grid. Um, and it looks like we've got a great uh, crop of young guys coming through. If you, if you look at the uh, previous development series guys that have popped to the top, um, we wouldn't have been able to normally get those people into, into our category. So, you know, I think really the answer is um, keep on doing the things that we've always done. And, and if you're genuinely talented, you'll, you'll make a, a career out of it. Dick Johnson always used to say a PhD would get you there. Parents had dough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's That's right. Let's, uh, let's go back to Eastern Creek. Here's the next question. Hi, I'm Tracy from New Zealand. I just want to ask Craig, um, now the street race is not an option in New Zealand, where would he like to see the racing? Well, I guess at the end of the day, look, I'd love to go back and have a street race there, whether it's in Auckland or Wellington. But um, look, Pukekohe this year was pretty good to race on. The new surface, I think everyone would agree that it was a lot better than what it has been in the past. And um, look, we've spent some money there. Why not go back there? It would be better off to go to Pukekohe than nowhere, for, especially for Greg. Well, and that's, and that's, <laughs> that's, possibly, um, that's possibly what we might be looking at because Wellington has said no, Auckland has said no. So where are we at? I mean, it's, it's, I mean we're not, I, I'd hope that we're not going to lose a round there. I mean, it's been successful, and as Craig said, you know, while, while this, the race is successful, OK, it's not the, the best facility in the world or anything like that, but I don't, I mean... And it's one of the best supported, though. It's very well supported. Yeah, 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 and and, you, and the thing is, you get so many fans from New Zealand coming over to Australia to watch the race, and they've got their own race, and, and you know, it's become part of it, and obviously I'm a bit biased, but the well, fact of it is I don't think it can be ignored. Why, why, why aren't we going back there? What's the I think we are, mate. I don't well, know I think, yeah, it hasn't been decided yet, has it? Okay. It got, I mean, obviously everyone's disappointed about uh, the, the outcomes from the Wellington thing and the Auckland thing, and New Zealand's got this damn stupid resource consent thing that has to go through a huge, very expensive process for you anything like You shouldn't be disappointed. You're the king of New Zealand. Every time you go over there, you spot a, you know, cut out of you at the airport. Greg Murphy welcomes you to New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> when we arrived in New Zealand this year, folks, this is what we all got to see. Uh oh <laughs> Oh, you. <laughs> We've been expecting you. <laughs> there she is, Golden Rodeo. Based on the bulletproof workhorse, with a few rather clever additions. <laughs> Do pay attention, 51. Roll bars, rocket launchers, naturally. ABS braking, six speaker CD. Looks like you've thought of everything. <laughs> That's the eyebrow. Not quite. <laughs> Truth serum? Car wax. Bring it back clean, 51. Oh, grow up, 51. <laughs> hey! I've, got a, I've got a couple of questions. The first one is, what language were they speaking? <laughs> <laughs> and, and the second one is, who's a chick? <laughs> <laughs> How was that little look in the mirror, yeah. 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 Do, that yeah. do that again, do that again. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> All right, let's go back. We've got to get back to Eastern Creek. More questions. Oh, damn. Yeah, hi, my name's Martin Barr from Canberra ACT. Uh, my question's for Russell Engel. Uh, why does Marcus Ambrose always seem to qualify a little bit further up the order than you do? Never did like Canberra much. <laughs> 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 Cold joint it was. <laughs> Come on, get to the answer. Answer the question. Yeah, answer the it. question. Yeah, well, look. You know, um, <coughs> he's a little bit better. You wouldn't oh. say he was a lot better. He's <laughs> <laughs> a little bit better. Man, um, that is, you yeah. can't admit that. No, nah, look, he's all right at qualifying. <coughs> but there's a, hey, but you look at it, right, there's only about three guys that can qualify really well, don't you reckon? There's Bugger Lugs. Yeah. Ambrose. Uh, 
Ambrose and Lowndes, really. Well, they're the three. I mean, who else has really dominated Richo. qualifying? Didn't Richo have about three oh, last year? Yeah, yeah, Richo's been... Oh, this year he has. This year he's gone all right. Last year he was almost uh, on par with Mark. Wasn't he, Mark? Hey, Richo was. Yeah, hmm. yeah Murph yeah, does a good job. Oh, yeah. OK, maybe four then. Maybe four <laughs> drivers. <laughs> I, I, go, I go right at Bathurst. All right, Russell. Yeah. Uh, hey, one, one race, but oh, one, one race. race. Russell seems and to that, have dodged that, that question, that so a... let's uh, let's move on to the next one. <laughs> You've actually helped him out there, mate. <laughs> let's go back to the creek. Next question. Hi, it's Andrea from Ulladulla. Uh, GT, I was just wondering if you think the V8 Utes is a good breeding ground for future V8 supercar drivers. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, there's no the doubting race? that the Utes uh, or the Brutes. Um, entertainment value they obviously put on a very good show and very very close hard racing and they get into each other a little bit as far as a breeding ground goes I, i'm not sure we've ha really had anyone come through the brute uh, the brute ute program maybe warren luff i think he won the championship one year and then went on but warren had been around for a long time previous to that so i'm not sure it's where like if you go back to the young talented drivers thing where um you know you see the brutes as a, as a step in the lat a career ladder but um hey it puts on very very good racing they've got great sponsorship um, you know, and there's plenty of cars, so um, it's definitely not a, it's not a second option, it's a, it's a, it's a good option to I head think it, I think it's at a, the, the development ladder, if you want to call it, that's at an interesting phase, because it always used to be Formula Ford, Formula Holden, V8s, whereas now you've got so many other things. I mean, look at Paul, I mean, you went, you had a go at, uh, you were in Formula Holden, you had, you had a go in NASCAR briefly, didn't you? Yep. Australian NASCAR. Yeah, no, I, th I think the, uh, the development ladder is actually quite good at the moment. We've got the uh, Query Cup. Um, the Porsche series, and then we've got the, uh, the V8 supercar development series as well, which uh, the last three or four um, champions have sort of had a stint in the main series. So I think if you look at that, if you, know, if you go well in the, uh, in the development series, you get a good opportunity to step forward. And that's, that's what, you know, obviously all the team owners are looking for. They're looking for experience in the younger guys now because there are 32 cars on the grid. And, you know, we're looking for the young guys to obviously to take the sport forward. All right. Thank you for asking, uh, answering those questions. They were pretty good questions too. Coming up, it's a new segment in V8 superstars it's the vortex brain drain we'll explain when we come back oh. <laughs> welcome back to v8 superstars well these guys are very talented in their industry and in their field but we thought we would really put them to the test this year we'd like to thank vortex they are helping us in this one it's the vortex brain drain Shouldn't okay thank we're you going to ask me. these guys motorsport questions <laughs> and in fact <laughs> vortex and channel 10 are going to put up five they're going to purchase five hundred dollars worth of merchandise we will give that to the starlight foundation to be auctioned off at either the next superstars or wherever they want to do it and whoever wins this will ask you to match that with your team merchandise so that can be auctioned off as well so it's all for charity why don't we okay. just put 500 bucks in each? No, 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 no. And this is what you're playing for. you get your own 500 out for the Starlight Foundation? <laughs> this is what you're playing for. It's the Vortex <gasps> Cup, all right? Ooh. The Vortex Cup. Okay, here we go. First question. <laughs> don't well. look. I'm moving back from the desk. <laughs> I'm just moving a, back. A little, little bit more, Lee. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, move a bit more, we'll get Billy back. <laughs> hey, right, oh, hang on. Let me change, let me change okay. Scafie's <laughs> question. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Brad, you're first. I, I think that's a bit unfair. He's Brad, done a great job. You're first, Brad. <laughs> last, last weekend, Dan Weldon became the first British driver to win the Indy 500 since who? Last weekend, Brad. Can you phone a friend? <laughs> no. Graham Hill. Awesome. Well done. What year? Oh, oh. Yeah, that wasn't a part of the question. Well, 67. Oh, Very close. 66. Well done. Round of applause for Brad. He got it. Yeah. Right oh, no. We marked that one down. Next kidding. one is to Stevie Johnson. Oh, here we go. Stephen, remember the old, remember the old Winfield Triple Challenge days? Yeah. At Eastern yep. Creek? Yep. You had the drags, the bikes, the cars. Is that when Mark had his big crash? We're just talking about cars. <laughs> Focus on your question. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Focus on your question. <laughs> Who was the king of the Triple Challenge days at Eastern Creek? Jim Richards. No. Sorry. Oh, I have no idea. Does anyone want to have a go? Oh, oh, me, me. Glenn Seaton. You're the man. <laughs> in a, in so, a. unfortunately, in a, Stevie, uh, big Peter cross next. You're next. <laughs> Russell, you're next. Mm. Hey, hey, he's, he's, looking good. This, he's looking. He's Scaphy, looking. Scaphy. Scaphy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Russell. He's Monaco was Mark Webber's first F1 podium. When and where was Alan Jones? <laughs> oh. You got him yeah, kidding me. He couldn't remember his. <laughs> uh, Alan Jones. Yeah, you remember? You know, he's Australian, Australian. <laughs> F1 guy, champion. Yeah. 
I remember the last wine bar he went into, but that's about <laughs> 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 Do you remember where his first podium was? What country? What country or what track? <laughs> uh, get ready for the legal letter. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> take, a, take a guess, which country? Uh, come on, it was, he doesn't know um, another country. Come on, it was up. Germany. Close, uh, but not close enough. Austria. Uh, hey, Austria is in Germany. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Austria 77. All right, Murph, you're up next. And now you should be able to get this, Murph. When yeah, Channel sure. 10 became the broadcaster of V8 supercars in 1997, there was something different about its first telecast. What was it? Something different about it? Yeah. It was live. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't, it was on the, no, I have no idea. <laughs> Anyone else? Yeah, Billy Woods. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was no Lee Diffie. <laughs> no, no, no. Night time, first twilight. Good man. Well done. Yeah. Scafey got it. All right, Garth, you're next. Right, uh, no this is a tough Scaphie, one. Though. In what year, team, this is a dip, I'll, I'll take one of these three, but in what year, team and track did Michael Schumacher win his first Formula One Grand Prix? Oh. Ooh. 93. No. Ba -bong. Okay. You get, well, no, are you still in this? Because oh. I said I'd take so one of three. What was it? What year, team? Oh, Benetton. I'll take that. Okay. Well done. Round of applause for Thank Garth. You. He got it. <laughs> That was easy. So, score check, one for Brad, one for Brad. Oh, way too easy. <laughs> one for Brad, one for Gar. Okay, Paul. Within the past six years, a car at Bathurst was driven by two drivers with exactly the same full name. What was their name and how were they distinguished? Uh, David and Skippy. Uh, David Parsons, Skippy Correct. and Truckee. Well done. Parsons. Good work. Parsons. Round of applause for Paul. <laughs> Work. All right, Scaffy. I would have got that. No way. <clears throat> the Le Mans 24 hour is the weekend after Shanghai. Danish driver Tom Christensen can become the all time greatest winner. And if he wins and gets it, whose record does he take away? Jackie X. Good work. Oh. Round of applause for Scaffy. Yeah. All right, Beto, you got the last one. And then we get into the tiebreaker for the guys who have scored a point. Oh, is that it? We don't get a second shot. Make no. it easy, mate. <laughs> Once, that's it. Do you get a second shot at pole? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the shootout. I still reckon scapey has been through your notes, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Beto, an easy one here. True or false? Dick Johnson oh. started his racing career. It's a true or false answer. Dick Johnson started his racing career that's in a easy. Holden. No. False. Don't look false. at me, Beto. Yeah. Murph, Murph. Shh. Don't true. look at him. Stephen, you want to give the answer? Yeah, it was true. True. He did start at home. Hey, I can't believe it. He didn't help me out, any. <laughs> <laughs> I was just looking. Okay. Now, for the guys who got their question wrong, you're out of this. So, for the guys so who, you just point them who out? won. Point them out. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen Russell. Why didn't you give me that question? <laughs> okay. So, you guys have got to sit this out. So, we've, we've, got, we've got Brad Jones is in this. We've got Garth Tander, Paul Dumbrell. Scafie and Beto. Now, so just and first, his first hand up, and our executive producer is watching as well, and he oh. will have the final say. Ready? Is there, like, is there buzzers? Or no just... buzzers, it's hand so up. You make hand a noise, up. you can, you can, just like you can say pig, gong beater. Like say... <laughs> Why would we give you guys buzzers? <laughs> yeah, right. It'd be like romper room. <laughs> 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 okay. Bubble. You should get this. If you don't, you should be very embarrassed. Hand up is the quickest. Yeah, come I'll take on, it back. get to the question. <laughs> This year's, this year's championship forces you to drop your worst round. No, I haven't finished asking the question. Well, I might not. Put your hand down. <laughs> <laughs> this year's championship forces you to drop your worst round. Is it before or after Bathurst? Oh, jeez. Oh, oh, no. oh, oh, Bradley. Oh, no, was oh, no, Bradley. No, Bradley. That was no, Brad. 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 You got it. Oh, yeah, me. You've got to drop it before Bathurst. Wrong! Oh, wrong. 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 So let next. me get this right. So I won't no, lost, then I don't have to give them 500 bucks worth of my merchandise. Is that right? <laughs> Just hang on a moment. They didn't want it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> do you know, do you, know you put your hand up and you're not in it? I think it was better. Yeah? You put your hand up and you're not in it. I, I think it was better. Okay, He's from Beto. New Beto. Beto wasn't in it because no. he wasn't I'll even in it. I'll tell you after then. Yeah, no, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Craig Baird is our first winner of the Vortex Brain Drain. Trophy. Before, as I'm handing the cup, 
Greg Rust has a special announcement. What have they won, Greg? <laughs> hey, it's a nice prize, Craig. A beautifully mounted, handcrafted <laughs> Vortex trophy. A wonderful memento for there winning the man. brain drain. And Craig, courtesy mine. of your win, we've just donated $500. You've chipped in with $500 worth of WPS merchandise, which will be individually autographed and used for fundraising in conjunction with the next episode of V8 Superstars. It's all for the Starlight Children's Foundation. That's Thanks right. to Vortex Network 10 and the frustrated voiceover guy. <laughs> That was the Vortex Brain Drain. And as you saw, there was a bit of draining going on. We'll come back. Brad thinks he's robbed. We'll discuss that when we come back. Plenty more to come on Superstars. You going to Shanghai? No. G'day, mate. You going to Shanghai? Uh, no, I'm not. <laughs> this chap is. Are you going over there? Yeah, mate. Yeah. Mate, all booked? I'm all booked, ready to go, mate. Yeah. Got the rickshaw waiting at the airport. Are you going to go to Shanghai? I'd love to. Mm. Well, but do you reckon it's worth it? Uh, it definitely would be worth it, yes. Sure, definitely get the sport um, out of the country, make it international. Mm. Um, get more, more spectators for the sport. It's better for the sport, better for everyone. Hey, Daryl, are you going to Beijing, mate? No. No? Shanghai. No! <laughs> I've got three people with it already. <laughs> yeah, one was probably Greg Russ. The other one would have been Lee Hemby. And him the way he's driven off. Is it a good thing that they're racing in Shanghai? I think it's good for the series, yeah. I think it's great. Yeah, I think it's fantastic. I think it's great. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> there you go. Great, great, great. Why not? Are you uh, looking forward to Shanghai? Oh, I'm looking forward to Shanghai. I think uh, Russell's had some doozy quotes, but I just want to turn up there, mate, and, uh, you know, just experience a new country. I've raced around the world many times, never in Asia, so it's going to be brand new. I just hope that I catch the bus in time to make it to the track. Yeah, well, it is bust out, isn't it? It is, yeah. We're all catching buses for the first time. I don't know the last time I caught a bus. It must have been when I was 15. Yeah, would you sit up the back or up the front? No, I'm a backseat bugger, yeah. mate. No problem. <laughs> Apparently, there's a lot of little things you need to remember so you don't upset people. Little, little, um, like, direction you leave your chopsticks and all that sort of thing. I can't even eat with chopsticks. I think I'm going mm -hmm. to struggle with direction, that's for sure. But um, it's definitely going to be interesting. It's nothing we've ever done here before. Yeah. Uh, so I'm looking forward to it. What is the one thing you're going to take that you don't reckon you can get over here? Actually, they'd probably go mad over there for veggie, mate, wouldn't they? I, I don't or reckon you can get... a good old Aussie meat pie. Oh, mate. We'll take oh, the Aussie mate. meat pie. <laughs> <laughs> the 4 and 20. By about day three, mate, you'd be able to sell them for 50 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be good. Do a warning. I might be able to make a profit over there. What about a warning? A whole pallet load of baked beans. <laughs> what are your baked beans? Which is probably a good idea. I'm willing to have a crack at anything. Right, okay. Yeah. Chicken feet? <laughs> nah. No way. <laughs> oh, you say anything, but draw the line chicken, of chicken feet. Chicken beaks. Oh, no, I couldn't do that. What about that red thing off the top of roosters? <laughs> <laughs> no way. No way. <laughs> the only comb I'll be going near, mate, is the one that brushes my hair. Our Tim Smith asking the hard questions at Eastern Creek. <laughs> Let's start with our overseas hero at the one and only overseas event that we go to, New Zealand. And I mean, you've enjoyed good success. You've raced at Le Mans. You know what it's like to race overseas. You're looking forward to it? I think it's um, absolutely fantastic for the carrier, as everyone has said. I mean, we're all looking forward to it. The circuit looks sensational. Um, brand new circuit for us all. No one's got any information about the place, and the facility is, is sensational too. I mean, it's going to be all new for me. I haven't been, been to China before, and I'm really looking forward to it. And you know, like everybody, I'm sure, um, you know, it's huge for our championship to be going over there. So excited as I just want to win the thing. Let's work our way around. Beto, what do you think? You looking forward to it? Yeah, I am looking forward to it, mate. I um, I think these cars will be great around such a quick track. Somewhere that uh, Scapey hasn't raced for the last 20 years would be great. <laughs> but, um, hey, look, everyone up and down the pit lane, you know, the, the guys that do all the work behind the scenes, all the mechanics and everything, they're probably more excited than what the drivers are, mate. They're, they're just ready to go and um, a lot of hard work for them, but... Uh, a, lot of, a, lot of them have, a lot of them haven't been outside. Back, mate. <laughs> I actually them. forgot what these things look like. <laughs> <laughs> really nice. A lot of them haven't been outside, probably outside Australia or New Zealand, a lot sure. of the guys that work on the team, so it's, it's a pretty bit of an adventure. Garth, is it a good thing for the championship? Absolutely. It's going to be... Um, so what's going to be really interesting is it's, it's the first time in a long time that we're going to a track that no one's ever been to before. So uh, we're going there with no data. It's basically turn up on Friday, 
get into it and see how you go. So it's going to be very interesting to see what teams adapt to the new circuit and, uh, and get into their stride very quickly because with only the one two-hour practice session leading into qualifying, you need to be on top of your game very, very early. Otherwise, it, it'll make for a long weekend. The boys at Dick Johnson Racing looking forward to it? They are, mate. Yeah, it's, uh, it's obviously a lot of work, as the boys have said, but... Uh, I know Russell's quite keen to get over there and buy all the knockoffs that uh, that he can't afford over in Australia. Well, so. Right, so. By the right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> by the what did you say? All the, all the knockoffs. Knockoffs. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> knockoffs. I didn't know what he was going to buy. <laughs> <laughs> going to buy some Lolexes. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, what are your thoughts on it? It's a big, yeah. it's a big trip. It's a big expense. It's it's there's a lot involved. <laughs> yeah, no, it's going to be a you know, really interesting weekend for I guess uh, everyone involved and um, you know, just the experience of going over there. As long as we don't uh, pinch any more races from Australia to a advantage the fans from here, I think everyone will be happy. Team, team BOC were extra prepared for their trip to Shanghai. Let's take a look at this. I think we've got some, some overlay of uh, just how prepared they were. Brad, do you want to explain? <laughs> no, I don't know much about the... <laughs> Take joy for now. <laughs> <laughs> Brad Lee, is that your new yeah, name? Brad Lee. Brad Lee. <laughs> yeah. you, you want some rice with that? <laughs> yeah. Isn't it San Choi Bao, not San Chow Bao? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> if you can get it on telly, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it was the right way up. <laughs> it was on John's car. It's on John's car, that's exactly right. Look, we're really excited at work. We've been doing debriefs in Cantonese, so we you know, really get the feel of the, uh, the language. And every time someone has a birthday at work, we dip down to the Chinese shop and eat. <laughs> I didn't know You're what he was going to say. I know, I was waiting for that too. <laughs> I didn't know how that was going to finish. Can't believe you just left that alone. Oh, just go. What do you think? I mean, you've had plenty of experience overseas too, in Japan and Le Mans and wherever. Well, I went over New Lucky in yeah, New Zealand uh, last year in, uh, in July, and, and the place is probably the best motorsport facility in the world right now. You know, they spent 400 million US on it. Um, so I'm sure when we get there, it'll be, uh, you know, the facilities will be the best that we've seen. Hey, they spent 25 grand on Pukekohe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, New Zealand, 25 grand New Zealand. <laughs> yeah, 10 yeah. grand Australia. 10 grand Australia. Yeah. Um, but uh, it'll, look, it'll be fantastic, there's no doubt. And uh, what all the guys have said about uh, us being positive about it, now we've got to go and do it. Um, it's hard for everybody in terms of logistics, but when we get there and we get on track, you know, I'm sure uh, we'll, be, uh, we'll be into it and we'll enjoy it. Come back to you two in just a moment from the team owner's point of view, but you've raced in an Asian culture in Japan. Do you think it'll be a good thing for us? And do you think they'll like us? Oh, I'm actually really look at what, Brad? You got that look in your eye. You, when did you ever race in Japan? Yeah, I yeah, raced for seven months in Japan. Yeah, Formula what, 3. go-karts? No. No. Formula did you really? You should have asked him a question about yeah. Russell. Yeah, yeah. Ask yeah. 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 oh. me anything about Russell. I'm his biggest fan. I've been around, buddy. <laughs> I've been around. You have? Yeah. More Actually, do you, know, do you know the Scafie's quiz question about who could be the greatest at Le Mans ever? Yeah. He used to race with him. He raced with Tom Christensen. Oh, the I punted him into a wall at Macau. He was crying when I finished with really. <laughs> 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 him. was very unsafe. He's a nice guy, Tom Christensen, him. actually. He's a nice guy. He's a sook. So, you, so, <laughs> so you're looking forward to it, Russell? And he's only won five looking, Le Mans. I'm looking forward to it, especially because I bought some fortune cookies the other day, and I broke one open and it said, you will be very successful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He, he makes like, him the himself his own. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Righto, from team owner's point of view, has it been an I extra... Finish it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> No, yes, we are. have. We yes, we are looking say. forward to it. And I'd like to point out that it's actually our third overseas race because we actually got Tasmania as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And you won that last year, didn't you? And I won that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> they'll, 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 be, they'll be looking forward to seeing you later this year. <laughs> That's overseas, isn't it? No, no, I wasn't hanging on Tasmanians. You were. <laughs> yeah. it's my, my teammate's Tasmanian. I never hang it on him. <laughs> <laughs> From a team owner's point of view, has it been an extra expense? I mean, is it a hassle or is it... Not too bad. If you live in Albury, it's probably pretty expensive. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? Which airport do you go to? I go to the Albury. Or <laughs> International Airport. <laughs> what a silly, silly question. And shut do they have the a 747 going there? Yeah, it's slightly, slightly smaller. We washed it and shrunk it up a bit. Um, I, there's a lot of things. I think the first one's going to be really tough. You know, trying to get everything over there, things organised, you know, the, trying to organise, even to get the radios into the country is a drama. But I'm trying to be serious. <laughs> but um, I think once we go there and race, it, it'll be clear how it all works. We've been fortunate enough to do a couple of flyaway races and race. Flyaway races. Fly 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 <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, I'm easy, getting into easy it. Easy for I'm you to say flyaway. Yeah, when you order Red Chinese, Lee. <laughs> Brad Lee. <laughs> Brad Lee. <laughs> say it right, will you? When you order Chinese all the time, you just stand there. <laughs> 
And I'd just like to say a big hi and hello to all my Chinese supporters out there today. You are digging the whole D for Brad, um, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, look, this is, like, oh, this is a happy ending. It is a happy ending. <laughs> I've heard, well, I have heard a lot of talk oh, about is, that, uh, that perhaps even a, Ves even a Vesco would like to eventually get up to four overseas races. Do you think this is a step one in, in the, the whole process? Four races would be too many. I mean, I think two plus New Zealand, because I don't really call that a much nah. of a flyaway race, but that's plenty. <laughs> Yeah. What do you guys reckon? When you see the logistics involved, like yeah. I, know, I know at Eastern Creek we're leaving the track on Sunday. Come on, here, come in. And all these um, trucks are rolling up with all the containers which they're loading all the kit in and the guys, they reckon there's going to be that tight a fit that they actually have to lower the cars on the suspension, put stiffer springs in because they reckon the bumping of the plane, the actual roofs of the cars might actually hit the top of the container. So that's how tight everything is. So logistically it's, it's hard work. Like all the Queensland teams are actually... Um, had to prepare the cars all at Eastern Creek Circuit before they leave to go down to Avalon, down to Melbourne before they, before they leave on the plane. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's just too tight. I don't mm. think they're going to actually manage to juggle anymore. Brad's already done his. He's already packed the roof. <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. In oh, fact, yeah. We, have, we have two roofs to put on the car. <laughs> yeah. Steve, They're nice and flat, let me tell you. <laughs> Steve Johnson, uh, what, you know, your dad is one of the sports legends. What, what, what does he say about this? I mean, this is quite an interesting period for him as a team owner to go through this. That I imagine when he was racing, he never imagined we'd be going to China. Yeah, that's right. I mean, he's, uh, I think he's thinking it's quite easy at the moment. He doesn't really have to do too much to, uh, <laughs> to get the cars over there. But um, yeah, as Russell said, the, the Queensland teams do have to do a lot of work. Down, down at Eastern Creek, and they're, they're still there. Uh, well, they only come home, you know, the, the other day, so a uh, day or so ago. So it's it's been pretty tough for the boys. And uh, um, there's, the trucks stay down in Avalon. There's, uh, you know, we've had to pack all our race gear and put in the containers, and you know, trying to get everything cleaned. And same same sort of situation coming back from uh, New Zealand. You know, you can't send anything over there with dirt on it. You can't send anything over there with timber. You know, all the timber's got to be certified, which is half the guys. Um, pit garages are made out of the timber, so uh, it's, it's been pretty hard. No, had to take the wood grain dash out. <laughs> 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 well, I mean, it, 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 is, it, is, it does offer something different for the championship, doesn't it? I mean, it's an extra workload. It's something different that we're going to do, but I'm sure we'll all come back and have plenty of positive things to say about it. No, no absolutely. doubt. Absolutely. It'll be great. So, how, actually, how have, the teams found, how have the teams found the opening part of the year? Because we've gone from Melbourne for the support race... Then we went to over to Adelaide, across to Pukekohe, all the way back across to Perth, and then back up to Sydney. So, I mean, how are your boys going? Have you tired, a bit ragged? Well, logistically, to go from the furthest eastern point to the furthest western point, yeah. then come back, do the race in Sydney, go to China, come back and then go to Darwin oh, straight after. Uh, you know, it's tough. But what will happen is, as an industry, we'll get more used to the flyaway concept. For sure, if we go back to New Zealand, we'll fly to New Zealand. That'll be a, an important part going forward. Um, and even in uh, the future of the flyaways, we'll make sure that the Queensland teams can come out of Queensland so we don't all, <coughs> don't all have to come back to Melbourne. I'll tell you what I noticed uh, over the last couple of events is the amount of people, and you guys would know better than me, the amount of people that you meet in the paddock that are actually going to Shanghai. I've been There's quite lot, surprised. Yeah. From here, I'm saying, from Australia. I think I mean, the fans are... Ex uh, I think from the Vox Pops we saw before, there, a lot of them are very excited about it, and there's a lot that are planning their trips, and... I suppose some of them aren't going to be going to some of the other events or one of the other events that they do go to during the year. They're saving their money and they're going to go to China for it. And, and I think that's a good thing. Um, um, by the sounds of it, they're all pretty excited, so it's great. Tour, tour companies have got behind the yep, race as well tour. and, you know, doing sightseeing tours either before the race or after the race. So putting packages together and being smart about it and going to see some racing while they're away as well. So uh, it'll get better and better, you know, every year. And we go different places. If we go to different places, the same thing will happen. And the fans will get to experience the world with us. We are very much looking forward to that. Superstars has come to an end. We would like to thank our panel of experts, the regular guys and the guests. Big round of applause for the boys. Oh, hang, on, hang on, Lee. Hang on, hang on. Hang on. We've got... Now, we've got a new, new guy in control here. First night, he's an absolute superstar's virgin. So what do we think, guys? Did he do a good job? Reasonable job? No. Billy would have been better. <laughs> Mate, <I'm dead. laughs> oh, come on. Uh, We'd like to welcome you, Lee. Lee, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Well thank you very much. It's nice to be here.
feel like a burden? Did you feel like a burden? Nah, it was a little, I've settled in, I've settled in. But we look forward to the next round, which is, of course, as we just spoke about, Shanghai, that's coming up in a week's time, <laughs> June 12, and you can catch it right here on your home of Great motorsport. Role. And it's a big telecast, too. We've got five hours, 12 till 5, bringing you all the action and extra stories from Shanghai. We thank the boys over on the VB bar in the hot seat, and of course, Thanks our special guys. guest, thank you. Larry thank you. Perkins. Stop, stop, mate. Stop, stop. Thanks, Scrapey. <laughs> The extra props, the sand, the rolls, <laughs> we're good. There's water flying everywhere. It's mayhem here. It is like romper room, believe me. And letting you know that the next V8 Superstars is coming your way the Monday after the Hidden Valley round in Darwin. So for all you folks up there in the Northern Territory, we look forward to that. And we hope that we can see you up there and with more carry-on, <laughs> I'm sure. And we will also have the Vortex Brain Drain. We'd like to thank the folks here at Star City Casino and Showroom for being great hosts, and it's a fantastic facility. And we thank you guys here that are with us. Give yourself a round of applause. <laughs> awesome stuff. And remember, as always, stay tuned to Network 10, your home of motorsport, and rpmlive.tv for all the future details on V8 Superstars. That's number one for the year. Plenty more to come. We'll see you soon.